today's sermon is Go Big Go Home. Or go home. Um, uh, the phrase came out, uh, uh, you know, people are um, kind of um, torn as to when it started. Some people say early 80s, and then other people say 90s. Uh, it was used, first of all, in the 80s by Harley Davidson that um, want you to buy their big bikes, of course, but then they had oversized mufflers, and so they were, their adage was go big or go home. Then also it was used in the surfing communities that wanted big waves, you know? They wanted big waves, go big or go home. But then also in Northern California here in the mountains where they're doing the, uh, the snowboarding, uh, and they want big air, of course they want to go up in the air and do all their number of turns and so on, nine, eighties and whatever they do. And uh, the slogan is also used there, go big or go home. And so today what I would like to do is apply it to a biblical passage uh, in Matthew, a passage that we're all very, very familiar with, uh, the parable of the talents and the servants. Now, uh, the context is that Jesus is talking about the end of the world, and so one of the points that Jesus is making is accountability. Accountability as the servants have been entrusted. But I want to take just a different look at this uh, scripture today. So if you join me, I'm going to go to Matthew 25. We'll have it projected here. So let's go ahead and read that. We're going to go big or go home in relation to our service. And so starting at verse uh, 14, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he's giving them an example. And he says, uh, he, and basically he's saying the kingdom will be, so again the, again, the kingdom will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. One of the things that you need to know and see in the scripture immediately is that usually, you know, it talks about coins and or a talent. And so when you think about a talent, sometimes you think it's one coin. Actually, a talent is at least over one thousand dollars. Wow. Okay. So think about that. And so it could be possible that they they're worth much, much more. So when we see that the one five bags, and again, not just one coin, but five bags of coins, okay? With a value of over, of, you know, well over $5,000, okay? Okay, so the man who received the five bags of gold went out at once and put his money to work and gave five bags more. Also, also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done. Good and faithful servant, you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, if you knew that, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. 
So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more. And they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. Five lessons from someone who squandered opportunity. Okay, let me just tell you the onset. The servant with the one, for some reason, you know, an obvious reason, the, the scripture spends a whole lot of time with him. And so that's the guy that we really need to pay attention to, or that's the servant we really need to pay attention to. Because we have a servant who had five talents, one who had two, and one who had one. Now, talent is not just the money that they have, but talent is your time, your gifting, your money. It's the totality of your life. We, we know immediately from this text that there are some people who are a five-bag people. And we have the two-bag people and the one-bag people. Okay? But notice how equitable the master is. He's not requiring anything more from the five-bag person than he is the one-bag person. Each of them will be held accountable for what they have been given. And so, as we look at this text here, there are at least five lessons that we can learn from someone who squandered an opportunity. Because I can tell you, in a church, and in our churches across the United States, all over, in churches, there are people who are squandering ministry opportunities. They are taking their gift as the, as the one bag person did, and they are sitting on it, they are hiding it. It is being hidden and not used. And obviously we can see that the master is not pleased with us just merely sitting on it. The master was not interested or was he moved by the reason that the servant had for not doing what the master had required him to do. So, five lessons. So what can we learn from this unprofitable, unfaithful, and the scripture calls him a wicked servant? What way can we learn? First of all, you got your sermon notes? Yes. Okay, we can learn this. What we need to do is we need to be able to take our position and our responsibility seriously. Amen. Take your position and your responsibility with sincerity. Lunatics. Again, the kingdom will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. He has given them a great responsibility. He takes his wealth and he gives it to his servants. Now, it's his money, but he's given it to his servants in order that they might work his stuff and then bring a return. The servants have nothing unless the master gives it. So the master gives them these talents, money, in order that they might use. The Lord has given you talents. The Lord has given you time. The Lord has given you the ability to gather an income from wherever the income comes from. The Lord has done all these things for you. And now our job, our responsibility to take seriously is what do we do with what we have been given. So here's some of the things we need to remember. First of all, remember your role. There's an owner and there's a servant. The owner will not act like the servant and neither will the, the servant act like the owner or the master. The owner is perfectly in line to tell the servants what to do. The servants have been chosen to do this function and it is the servant's responsibility to do it. Actually, that word there is doulos, which actually can be translated in some, translate, in some verses of the Bible. It is actually the word slave. So they had no choice. They had no option. They were not doing this because out of the goodness of their heart. They were doing this because they were bound to the master. And the master had given them this responsibility. And because the master had given them this responsibility, he expected them to take it seriously and get right to work. Two of them did. One did not. 
Two of them acted like servants. The other one acted as if he was the owner. I wonder how many of us are acting like the owner. That somehow we think that we can take what God has given us and use it if we want to. Notice here. Secondly, notice what you have in your head. Everyone here has been given a gift. You know, in the, in the, in, in the Greek... Uh, this text here, the word that he used, the entrustment and the money and the gift, uh, according to his ability, actually is the word dunamis, or the word for dynamite. In other words, he gave them according to their power. They had power. In other words, he gave them power in order to manage what he had given them. And so God has given you the power and the ability to use who you are and all that you have for his servant because you are his servant unless you are trying to move in the role of the master. It's just like Moses. Notice what Moses did. Moses complained and complained when God was saying, Moses, I want you to go to the children of Israel. And so Moses had a series of questions. Finally, the Lord said, boy, take, what is that in your hand? And so Moses looked at it, and Moses said, a staff, if that been many of us would have said, it's a stick. And the Lord said, throw it down. See, Moses had no idea what was in his hand. But when he threw it down, it became something a whole lot greater. Why? Because God breathed on it. Amen. So don't you think that when God called you to do something, that God's going to breathe on it? That's right. When he threw it down, it became a serpent. And Moses was quite surprised. Now, after the first time, and the God said, pick it up. And we're like, I don't know, Lord, I'm picking it up. I don't know, I don't know. But I waited until it was really looking that way. And then I don't know. God, if you turn back into a stick. Can you imagine what Moses did after that? If I was Moses, I'd go back through the village. <laughs> I don't think Moses did that. God has put something in your hand. God has put something in your mind. God has put something in your heart. God has put an ability that he has given you. You have not developed it yourself. He has given every one of us something. Amen. And the problem in many churches is that we look for people or the same people to do the same thing all the time. And it's amazing. Some of you have the gift of hospitality. I don't have that gift. I try. The things that I do for people when we're engaged and having dinners and so on, it's because my wife tells me because I don't have that gift. <laughs> That's not my gift. I don't know what to do. Well, did you ask them did they want something to drink? I'm like, no, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Well, didn't you know they need a tablecloth? They do. <laughs> That's not my area. Some of you know that. Some of you know that. You need your gifts and need to use your talents. Then, thirdly, remember this. Remember that God has set you up for success. Every servant there, God had set them up for success. God did not set them up for failure. The master had given them something so that they could succeed. He did not give them something so that they could fail. He did not give them something so that they may be ineffective. He did not give them something so they could merely say, look at what I got. No. He gave them something so that they could make an impact. You have something that makes an impact. But you never know until you use it. Amen. The guy who was the five banger, he immediately went to use it. The guy who was the two banger, he used it. But the dude with the one, for some reason, he allowed something within him to convince himself that he could not have an impact. Mm -hmm. I wonder what's telling you that you cannot have an impact. Yesterday, we, um, we, we had a prayer walk. We walked around the community. We had four different teams to walk around and pray walk throughout the community. And we just met with people. We prayed for people. We handed out some flyers, information from church. We were just walking around the neighborhood just being a blessing. Mm -hmm. I was surprised at the low number of people who showed up. Okay, let me ask a question. This, this is just be an example to you. How many of you can pray?
Everybody can pray, right? Amen. How many of you can walk? Opportunity. Opportunity. Some of you are really good with people. Some of you, we try to keep away from people. <laughs> that just isn't your thing. Bless your heart. People come when we be getting in the way. Make sure they don't see you. Because you just don't know how to do people. Think about this. When the Lord had given them these talents in order for them to use and invest. He entrusted them. He said, go, go forth and play. They were using, I, I know none of you have ever been in a casino. I know that, okay? I know that for a fact. So one of the tell you is going to be quite foreign. See, I had to walk through one on my way when I was working. I, I did go to a work conference in Las Vegas. I did actually. My boss could say, really? You're going to Las Vegas? Yeah, I had to go to a conference in Las Vegas. Anyway, so... As I was going through, I noticed that people were playing, and I heard one lady say, yeah, but it's just like playing with the house's money. How can you lose when you're playing with the house's money? In other words, the one that you're playing, or you have been given an allotment by the people in charge, and it's not anything that costs you anything. It's something that's been given to you, and they're saying, now, go play. Go multiply. Go try to make some money off of this. Go try to do something with this. You're playing with the house's money. This is what God has given you. You're playing with the house's money. He's already set you up for success. All he wants you to do is do something. Amen. Notice here, the master got on his case because he didn't do anything. What are you doing? What are you doing? So number two, the second lesson that we get from this, this servant, the servant, is this. That we need to maintain a healthy or a positive concept of the master. We need to maintain a positive or healthy concept of who the master is. Look at our text, Matthew 25, 15. To the one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, to another one bag, each according to his dunamis or ability, his power. Then he went on his journey. He said, here, I'm entrusting it. I'm giving you what you need. I'm giving you according to your abilities. Uh, you've shown me what you can do thus far. Therefore, I'm going to give it to you and I'm going to go. Just go at it. Some of us here, when you pray and you're dealing with God the Father, it's hard for you because you got daddy issues. Some of you have father issues. Some of you have men issues. Some of you have women issues. And sometimes, amen, just say it, amen, as you say it, and real quick, we won't know. <laughs> but you have issues. And it's hard for you to see a positive relationship with someone because you got issues. And so you treat people a different way. And they don't do anything to you. It's just because you have unresolved stuff that you think nobody knows about, but it's like all out here. And we see that. Some people have issues with the Lord. And the reason you can sit, and the reason you can sit back, and the reason why you don't feel like you have to then be the servant that he's called you to be is because you have an unhealthy opinion about God. Mm. Notice, when the servant with the one coin, with the one bag, as soon as he was an entrusted, he didn't say, you're a hard man. You reap where you haven't sown. He didn't say that. Notice, he only had the contrary opinion when it came time to give an account. And think about this. No one else had that opinion of the master but him. Interesting. No one else had that opinion of the master. Some of you have opinions of God and it's just incorrect. It's just incorrect. Here's some of the things. Notice, uh, 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 think about this. Let's go to our, our text. Think about this. 
We've got to deal with unresolved master issues. Some of you don't think God is on your side. Some of you don't think that God is giving you anything. You've got to deal with unresolved master issues. Sometimes you don't think that God has given you the God has given everyone a gift. He's given everyone something. But you don't believe God. You don't trust God. Because one time in your life, maybe you prayed for something or you did something and God didn't come through. God didn't heal grandma. God didn't heal somebody. And now you're all messed up and twisted and so on because God didn't do what you wanted him to do in the way that you thought he should do it. As if God is somehow genie. Not genie, Tommy's wife, but genie. Like I dream of genie. Oh, get it on reruns. Go to YouTube. <laughs> so that's what we think. We think somehow that God is genie. And so we have a misconception about how God works. I have people sometimes talk about, well, you know, in the Old Testament, God was just so harsh and so on. But I didn't have to remind people. I said, none of us have really deserved to live. Amen. We're all sinners. Amen. We don't deserve to live. It's by God's grace and mercy that we live. And so sometimes people have these unresolved father issues, God issues. you got to deal with that. Next, don't be in prison by your personal barriers. Now, if you look at this text and look at it real closely, when the master did the entrustment and looked as if it was a public event, it looks like it was public. And so the master bringing out his bags, he brought out Boom, this dude got five. The next dude, boom, he got two. Can you imagine being the second dude and saying, okay, he got five. I'm going to get at least six. <laughs> and he got two. Which says that in ability, let's just extrapolate, that number two, that number that number one was two and a half times more efficient and more capable than number one. <clears throat> you got that math? I'm sorry, I throw some math in on Sunday morning, I know. But then think about it. So, but then think about the dude that got one. He's half the servant of the one that got two. And the other servant that got five, the other servant that got five is five times better and five times more talented than the dude with one. He had issues. They got five, he got two, he got one. It's like Charlie Brown and the Halloween thing that was on TV. Everybody gets their bag and they get something, get something, Charlie Brown gets something, boom, it hits his bag, and everybody look, well, I got this, and I got candy and Reese's and so on. What did you get, Charlie Brown? He goes, I got a rock. Some of us may feel that we got a rock. But see, the servant didn't see that there was grace in this distribution. Because the Lord was giving people what they could handle. Now, he knew that the one can handle five now. He knew that the other first, second servant can handle two right now. And he knew that the servant with one can handle one. And actually, you see, he was proven right. But notice here something here. Notice something here. Is that after, as the master is giving out these gifts, <laughs> I don't think Moses did that. God has put something in your hand. God has put something in your mind. God has put something in your heart. God has put an ability that he has given you. You have not developed it yourself. He has given every one of us something. Amen. And the problem in many churches is that we look for people or the same people to do the same thing all the time. And it's amazing. Some of you have the gift of hospitality. I don't have that gift. I try. The things that I do for people when we're engaged and having dinners and so on, it's because my wife tells me because I don't have that gift. That's not my gift. I don't know what to do. 
Well, did you ask them, did they want something to drink? I'm like, no, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> because that's not my area. Well, didn't you know they need a tablecloth? They do. <laughs> that's not my area. Some of you know that. Some of you know that. You need your gifts and need to use your talents. Then, thirdly, remember this. Remember that God has set you up for success. Every servant there, God had set them up for success. God did not set them up for failure. The master had given them something so that they could succeed. He did not give them something so that they could fail. He did not give them something so that they may be ineffective. He did not give them something so they could merely say, look at what I got. No. He gave them something so that they can make an impact. You have something that makes an impact. But you never know until you use it. Amen. The guy who was the five banger, he immediately went to use it. The guy who was the two banger, he used it. But the dude with the one, for some reason, he allowed something within him to convince himself that he could not have an impact. Mm -hmm. I wonder what's telling you that you cannot have an impact. Yesterday, we, um, we, we had a prayer walk. We walked around the community. We had four different teams to walk around and pray walked around the community. And we just met with people. We prayed for people. We handed out some flyers, information from church. We were just walking around the neighborhood just being a blessing. Mm -hmm. I was surprised at the low number of people who showed up. Okay, let me ask a question. This, this is just be an example to you. How many of you can pray? Everybody can pray, right? Amen. How many of you can walk? I'm just saying. Opportunity. Opportunity. Some of you are really good with people. Some of you we try to keep away from people. <laughs> that just isn't your thing. Bless your heart. People come, we be getting in the way, make sure they don't see you. Because you just don't know how to do people. Think about this. When the Lord had given them these talents in order for them to use and invest, he entrusted them. He said, go, go forth and play. They were using, I, I know none of you have ever been in a casino. I know that, okay? I know that for a fact. Okay. So one of the tell you is going to be quite foreign. See, I had to walk through one on my way when I was working. I, went, I did go to a work conference in Las Vegas. I did actually. My boss could say, really? You're going to Las Yeah, I had to go to a conference in Las Vegas. Anyway, so as I was going through, I noticed that people were playing, and I heard one lady say, yeah, but it's just like playing with the house's money. How can you lose when you're playing with the house's money? In other words, the one that you're playing, or you have been given an allotment by the people in charge, and it's not anything that costs you anything. It's something that's been given to you, and they're saying, now, go play. Go multiply. Go try to make some money off of this. Go try to do something with this. You're playing with the house's money. This is what God has given you. You're playing with the house's money. He's already set you up for success. All he wants you to do is do something. Amen. Notice here, the master got on his case because he didn't do anything. What are you doing? What are you doing? So number two, the second lesson that we get from this, this servant, the servant, is this, that we need to maintain a healthy or a positive concept of the master. We need to maintain a positive or healthy concept of who the master is. Look at our text, Matthew 25, 15. To the one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, to another one bag, each according to his dunamis or ability, his power. 
Then he went on his journey. He said, here, I'm entrusting it. I'm giving you what you need. I'm giving it according to your abilities. Uh, you've shown me what you can do thus far. Therefore, I'm going to give it to you and I'm going to go. Just go at it. Some of us here, when you pray and you're dealing with God the Father, it's hard for you because you got daddy issues. Some of you have father issues. Some of you have men issues. Some of you have women issues. And sometimes, amen, just say it, amen, as you say it, and real quick, we won't know. <laughs> but you have issues. And it's hard for you to see a positive relationship with someone because you got issues. And so you treat people a different way. And they don't do anything to you. It's just because you have unresolved stuff that you think nobody knows about, but it's like all out here. And we see that. Some people have issues with the Lord. And the reason you can sit, and the reason you can sit back, and the reason why you don't feel like you have to then be the servant that he's called you to be is because you have an unhealthy opinion about God. Notice, when the servant with the one coin, with the one bag, as soon as he was entrusted, he didn't say, you're a hard man. You reap where you haven't sown. He didn't say that. Notice, he only had the contrary opinion when it came time to give an account. And think about this. No one else had that opinion of the master but him. Mm -hmm. No one else had that opinion of the master. Some of you have opinions of God and it's just incorrect. It's just incorrect. Here's some of the things. Notice, uh, 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 think about this. Let's go to our, our text. Think about this. We're going to deal with unresolved master issues. Some of you don't think God is on your side. Some of you don't think that God is giving you anything. You've got to deal with unresolved master issues. Sometimes you don't think that God has given you the God has given everyone a gift. He's given everyone something. But you don't believe God. You don't trust God. Because one time in your life, maybe you prayed for something or you did something and God didn't come through. God didn't heal grandma. God didn't heal somebody. And now you're all messed up and twisted and so on because God didn't do what you wanted him to do in the way that you thought he should do it. As if God is somehow genie. Not genie, Tommy's wife, but genie. Like, I dream of Jeannie. Oh, get it on reruns. Go to YouTube. <laughs> so that's what we think. We think somehow that God is Jeannie. And so we have a misconception about how God works. I have people sometimes talk about, well, you know, in the Old Testament, God was just so hard and so on. But I didn't have to remind people. I said, none of us have really deserved to live. Amen. We're all sinners. Amen. We don't deserve to live. It's by God's grace and mercy that we live. And so sometimes people have these unresolved father issues, God issues. you got to deal with that. Next, don't be in prison by your personal barriers. Now, if you look at this text and look at it real closely, when the master did the entrustment and looked as if it was a public event, it looks like it was public. And so the master bringing out his bags, he brought out Boom, this dude got five. The next dude, boom, he got two. Can you imagine being the second dude and saying, okay, he got five. I'm going to get at least six. <laughs> and he got two. Which says that inability, let's just extrapolate, that number two, that number that number one was two and a half times more efficient and more capable than number one. <laughs> you got that math? I'm sorry to throw some math on you on Sunday morning, I know. But then think about it. So, but then think about the dude that got one. He's half the servant of the one that got two. And the other servant that got five, the other servant that got
if I is five times better and five times more talented than to do with one. He had issues. They got five, he got two, he got one. It's like Charlie Brown and the Halloween thing that was on TV. Everybody gets their bag and they get something, get something, Charlie Brown gets something, boom, it hits his bag, and everybody look, well, I got this, and I got candy and Reese's and so on. What did you get, Charlie Brown? He goes, I got a rock. Some of us may feel that we got a rock. But see, the servant didn't see that there was grace in this distribution. Because the Lord was giving people what they could handle. Now, he knew that the one can handle five now. He knew that the other first, second servant can handle two right now. And he knew that the servant with one can handle one. And actually, you see, he was proven right. But notice here something here. Notice something here. Is that after, as the master is giving out these gifts, in this particular circle, the first servant was a five-bag dude. The second servant was a two-bag dude. The other servant was a one-bag. Think about it. In other circles, the one who was a five-bagger could actually be a 20-bagger. The one who's a one-bagger could actually be a five-bagger. It depends on the circle that you find yourself in. You may be a small fish in a big pond, but in a small pond you may be a big fish. But God requires the same thing from each and every one of us. Notice here, the master, even though when, when they come to give an account, notice what the master says. No matter how much they've received, the master says, I gave you what? A few things. You have proven faithful over a few things. Some of you perhaps are frustrated and angry and thinking that everyone else is more talented than you and you spend so much time looking at one another and looking at other people that you can't concentrate and do the thing that God has called you to do. Some preachers are like that. For one of the first things sometimes when you meet preachers, the first thing they want to ask you is, well, how big is your church? I go, big enough? <laughs> big as what God would have it to be. Amen. Because Amen. God knows what I need to do and what he's called me to do. Amen. And so sometimes people get off kilter with that. And so people then want it up. And then they go, well, I only got one. You know, get over that. You need to... Really utilize what God has given you. And then, last, what else we learned here? We need to keep the kingdom in focus, because actually it's about the kingdom. It's about the kingdom of God. It's about what God wants to accomplish. And so, if the servant with one would have just thought, it was like, uh, this isn't about me. This is about the building of the kingdom. So it doesn't matter what I am given, I have a responsibility to adequately use what I have been given. Because I'm building the kingdom. Last thing here on this second point here, as we're dealing with the healthy image of the master. Think about this. Now, if this master had a lot of land and he had a lot of assets and his riches and so on, is it possible that he had more than just three servants? And that we see that these three servants have been entrusted, but there's other servants that he has that have not been entrusted. Is it possible he could have more servants? And to think about this, if these three are looking at the benefits of the kingdom and using what they have for the kingdom, then actually they have been specifically pointed out, the three have been pointed out, but the one couldn't see that he was absolutely admired by the master and chosen to be one of the three. He was one of the three chosen. You are one of the chosen ones. That God has given you something. What are you doing with God has given you? Number three, what else can we learn? We need to gain the self-awareness that comes from being stretched. Gain the self-awareness that comes from being stretched. Sometimes you can only see what you have when you are being stretched. Yeah, that's right. You've got to be stretched. Who likes to be stretched? No one likes to be stretched. That's why people 
hire athletic trainers or, or trainers at the gym because they know they are not able or nor do they have the drive to stretch themselves. But if they would uh, go and be with this athletic trainer, then the trainer will stretch them. And where they did not have results, they will have results. We all need to be stretched. This was an opportunity for them to be stretched. Look at our text. Matthew 25, 27 says, well then, notice this is the accounting conversation with the first servant. Well then, he said, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Look, if you didn't do anything else, why don't you just take my money and turn it into a bank? Surely I would have gotten something. But the servant didn't do anything. The servant was inactive. Are you inactive? The only one that's required or even allowed to be inactive is the master. Are you confused about your role? Have you not heard the call? So what can we do? First of all, you need to use the situation to develop yourself. Use the situation to develop yourself. It may be, in your opinion, beneath you. I can't wash dishes. Who can't wash dishes? Who can't clean out counters? Who can't pass out a track? Who can't stand at the door and say, welcome? Who can't do that? Oh. Now, some of you, that may be demeaning to you. That may be below you. But if you're a servant, there's nothing beneath you. Your pastor cleans toilets at home and here. Perhaps more here than at home. The only thing here that I don't think I've ever done is cut the grass. Everything else I've done. I cut the grass. I pull weeds. I cut the grass. I think I've edged a few times, but I cut. The See, there's nothing too low for a servant. There's nothing too, too, too menial for a servant. Because remember, the word actually means slave. You hire the slaves to do things, so you get slaves to do things that you don't want to do. Notice this. This is a situation for development. The first servant, he missed the opportunity because it was, a, it was an opportunity for him to be developed. Notice this. It's just like when uh, you, you come to a football team and you get your first package. You get a starter package. You, know, you get a practice jersey and some other equipment that's just basically necessary. You don't walk in and get a game jersey. You have to earn a game jersey. Amen. But you get a practice. You get a starter set. And so you can't get the, the jersey until you have proven yourself. And so you can't go any further. You cannot progress until you have proven yourself. Therefore, you need to do the development. You need to get busy with that one talent. And so as you're developing yourself, you need to go all in. When's the last time that you've been in a situation you've gone all in? Because we live in a society where people don't want to go all in. That's why people don't want to get married. And even sometimes when they get married, they don't go all in. Do you go all into your job? Are you all into your church? For many people, no. No. Are you all into your family? Are you all in? Go all in. When's the last time you've just gone all in? No, you better go say that. No, go all into your marriage. You wonder sometimes why your marriage is dry, your marriage is sour, your marriage is no zing. Because you haven't gone all in. We need to fix our attitude. 
The servant's attitude was fear. He was afraid. And because he was afraid, he couldn't do anything else. Perfect love dispels. It casts out fear. Amen. They had no pressure other than to do something. You are playing with the house's money. You have an opportunity to get something done with God. But instead... They were walking in with an escape hatch. If I don't like this, how can I get out of it? Amen? Number four, number four. So what else can we learn? Never to squander an opportunity. Don't squander your opportunities. Notice our text. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Engage in divine sanctioned risk taking. That's what the disciple of the Lord is to do. Is to risk take. Because God has called you and sent you out. Risk take. Because God has you. There's a new project that we're getting ready to do here in the future. One, as I was standing on the corner and uh, Bart and I were talking, there was one opportunity that came to my mind that we're going to go do. We're going to go do that. We're going to go do that. Jack and I were talking about something this morning. I said, you know what? It is good to do something and not go by myself. Because God has called so many people who are gifted. Do you know sometimes why your Christian life is just so sour? Because you're sitting on your gift. Amen. You have no joy. You have no power. You have no strength. You have nothing to tell anybody else about the goodness of God. Why? Because you're sitting on your gift. Your gift makes life exciting. This is my gift. I know it is my gift. This is my gift. This is what I do. You can wake me up in the middle of the night and I do this. Everyone said I was talking in my sleep the other night. I was probably preaching this. <laughs> you see our folks on the stage this morning. This is their gift. This is what they do. It's work involved, but you know as you do it, it's fulfilling when you do it. Some of you can be such helps, all of you can be such helps to people if you just allow yourself to just use the gift that God has given you. And there's no retirement, don't say you're too old. That's not in the Bible. Matter of fact, God uses a whole lot of old folks, amen? Yeah. All right, that gets, that, that, that gets you out of that one, okay, amen. Next, apply your personal creativity. See, this is your personal creativity. If you notice something, the authors of the scripture even the gospel authors, you know, the Holy Spirit was the eventual author, but the Holy Spirit used human personalities. Here's why I know it. Because you have a version from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Some of them are sane, some of them are different. John does his own thing. Same spirit. What was God doing? Using that person and what that person saw in order to relate stories about Jesus. God has called each of you, and each of you has a personality. God wants to use your creativity. God wants to use what you're about. Mm -hmm. Next. You're only accountable for what you've been given. You're not accountable for what I've been given. You're accountable for what you have been given. That's right. um, my kids, all of them, they have different talents and different skills and so on. And so over the years, we've kind of just noticed, you know, who's good with people, who isn't. And we've just seen how, um, we've just seen how um, they, they, their personalities have led to various careers that they're pursuing. And so it's just wonderful. I'm going to give Natalie some props. Normally I always talk about Natalie, but I'm going to give Natalie some props today. Um, there's a video out by an artist, and I cannot even remember her name. Watch Angel. Angel, what is her name? Watch. March Angel, and uh, this is an artist, and she's flowing across the screen, and Natalie shows me the video, and I'm watching this, and I'm like, mm -hmm, whatever, and then something magnificent comes to my eyes, and it has, on one of the last screens, fashion designer, Ooh. Natalie. Oh. <laughs> now, you know, that didn't come from me. <laughs> But just to see how God uses who you are yes. to do his business. Amen. 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 
all that pain and suffering and taking my clothes. Okay, number five. <laughs> number five. <laughs> that I never got back. Now I know. They're like, wait a minute, look at her outfit. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's mine. All right, number five. Number five. <laughs> Seek the praise and the accolades from the Father. Seek the praise and the accolades from our Father. Just look at our text. Matthew 25, 28, 29 says, So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. Notice, it not, it's not the one who formerly had five. No, it's the one who has ten. Because he, he's now working on a ten bag thing. Right? He's now working on a ten bag. All right? So he's a ten bag man. All right? For whoever has been given, who has, will be given more. And they will have an abundance. Okay? Look at this. So here you go. First of all, look, decide to put it out there, okay? Decide, make up your mind to use your gift. Everybody in this church should be active doing something related to this church. Amen. Should, 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 must, must, must. You know, we don't like those words. Everybody has something to offer you need to put in because it's for the building of the kingdom. You wonder, well, why is the church do this? And why is the church do that? And why? And then you know what people do. We'll let the pastor do it, and that's why I'm always like, no, no, I'm not good at everything. I'm good at a few things, but I'm not good at everything. That's why I make room for you <laughs> and your ideas. I don't have, now we need to be in order, because I know some of y'all want to do your own thing. You can do your own thing within confines. Amen. Amen. The servants had boundaries. So, we want you to work within the boundaries. We want you to work within the boundaries. But you need to put it out there. See, what's that? Look, 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 second, second. Stop thinking yourself out of things. I bet you're talking to yourself. And the Lord saying, you need to go do this. And you just start the conversation. Reasons why you can't do this or you can't do that. Hmm. And you talk yourself out of it. Well, I don't have, look, if you, if, you, if you have one, you still got one. You know what? God is holding you responsible to that one. Right. Make that one. Work that one. <laughs> Work the one. <laughs> Because if you work the one, he turns it into two. Invest and leave the results to him. Okay, I want to tell you, show you something in, in the original language. When the scripture says, I have made you master over a few things, actually that word, it's oliga, unlike, almost like Ola's name, but it's oliga. And that Greek word can actually be translated puny. Not a few, but puny. In other words, what the Lord is saying, I have entrusted you over something puny. I, I've entrusted you, I have started you off with something puny. But I've started you off with something puny so that I can then take it and multiply it and then give it back to you in abundance. So I've given you something puny. I know it's puny. But right now, puny is what you can handle. <laughs> Work your puny. <laughs> and he will bring you good results. Let me end with this illustration. As you know, many of you know that I, uh, my initial career was in aerospace and defense, in which I've worked for 15 years. In my uh, second to last year there, before the plant just kind of sold off pieces of the, the business, um, I was manager, and I remember sitting in my office one Friday afternoon, and um, our stock, the stock of the um, aerospace company had gotten down to like $25 per share. And, and that was really bad. $25 a share is really bad. But as I was sitting in my office, and I don't worry about stock as long as the money's coming in. That's all I care about. I got kids to feed, right? 
And so I don't care about that. But then I had an idea. An idea cut in my mind. And it was just clear as day. And it said, take $10,000 and go buy GD stock. And I said, taking $10,000 and buying this stock is $25 a share. I ain't buying this. But it kept, kept bothering me, kept bothering me. So, about two weeks later, it was still around $25, $26 a share. I went and took three or $4,000, I cannot remember, and I bought three or $4,000 worth of this stock. Within a two year period, that stock went to $119 a share. Wow, amazing. A hundred and nineteen dollars a share. My three to four thousand dollars, I bought like a hundred and fifty, a hundred and seventy shares. When I could have had over four hundred shares. I missed an opportunity for about fifty to sixty thousand dollars. Why? Because I invested puny. Do you know the joy I could have had? <laughs> that would have paid off my house then. You know the joy? So I'm wondering about you, because there's an awesome, awesome ministry opportunity that the Lord wants for you. But I'm wondering if you'll invest puny or you'll go all in. Some of you all in, but the majority of you, your investment is puny. And so you only get marginal Increase in enjoyment. Mm -hmm. But if you would just go all in, you will reap a benefit beyond what you've ever imagined. Mm -hmm. Stop being puny. Go all in. Let's pray. Father, thank you for who you are and all that you do for us. How 